it's Tammy with Collar Valley Cooks. And today I'm making some chicken and dumplings for the girls. And I am going to steam some Brussels sprouts as well. chicken soup in my chicken and dumplings and get it to simmering because you want your broth boiling before you add your dumplings. I'm going to go ahead and put this cream of chicken in here. And we'll just let that sit right there while we make our dumplings. We're really making old-fashioned dumplings today, y'all. I'm going to start out with two cups of flour. And then I'm going to zoom y'all in when I, once I get this in my bowl. So we got one. So we're going to use about a quarter cup of shortening, put it in here. You don't have to use as much if you don't want to for dumplings. Mama said always that she used less shortening in dumplings than she did biscuits. Now I'm using a regular fork because I don't have my blending fork down here. And I'm just pressing the shortening up against the sides of the bowl. We're going to cut this in. Now, when you're making biscuits, you'd want your shortening about pea size. We're not really making biscuits, so I'll probably cut it in just a little bit more for dumplings. You want it about pea size so that when it goes in the oven and it expands, it puffs up your biscuits and make them flake, makes them flaky. But for dumplings, of course, we're not going to need that. So, I make flat dumplings. So right now, we're just cutting that in. And you just keep turning it so that you get all the shortening up against the wall and you're not left with any big clumps of shortening. That takes a lot more effort with my lymphedema arm than uh, making it with a blending fork. I can tell you that right now. I like the blending fork. If you don't have one, oh, they're just wonderful. All right, so, let me get us out some sweet milk. When I do dumplings, I use sweet milk um, instead of buttermilk because lots of times, for some reason, um, if you make dumplings with buttermilk, they just kind of want to fall apart when they hit the water. I mean, you can do it, but you have to make them pretty tough or they do fall apart. You're gonna add your milk just a little bit at a time for dumplings because you're not gonna get dumpling as, as wet as you would a biscuit. So you're just gonna add it a little bit at a time and stir it in between. I just added a lot. Probably added too much just now. That's okay. Alright. So just when it all comes together, that's when it's ready. And it's drier, of course, than a biscuit would be. How I used to make dumplings when I was a young woman and didn't have nothing. You don't really have to have all the things in the kitchen that I do. Um, you can get by with just a little bit, but you do need a sifter for sure. For sure. And now we're just going to 
knead these a little bit out on the counter. And you can, um, let me put a little more, more flour out here. You can use um, your hands to even cut your dumplings. Just pull them apart and drop them. But I'm going to cut in some flour because when you do dumplings, the way you know that you got them thick enough is once you roll them out, if you can pick them up and they don't fall to pieces, then they're ready to go in the pot. And this is the way you got to do it when you don't have a rolling pan. Okay. I think that's pretty thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this glass and I'm going to roll it with a glass. That's what I did when I was a young woman and didn't have a rolling pan. But you do have to have a glass that's flat if you do it this way. May, the, May has a friend down here with her. She loved my chicken last night. She said that she was thinking about how good it was when she went to bed. <laughs> so I'm hoping she loves our dumplings as much as she liked the chicken friend say. I know I say it wrong, but it don't matter. You don't know what I'm talking about. I am not French. I think it's something like Francese or something like that. These are good dumplings. I got these just perfect. See how I can pick them up and they don't fall, but they're still kind of soft. Woo, these are going to be good. Good, good, good. Dumplings. Now, I might bring back a lot of memories using the glass. As my mama used to glass. She didn't use a rolling pin. Really? I remember her using a glass more than a rolling pin. It takes a little longer, but you can do it. It's look good. So, once you get them rolled out, I like to dust them with a little bit of flour just to, that helps your dumplings thicken in the pot, okay? And now we're going to take we got, it. we got our mixture over here boiling. That's perfect. We're going to take a fork and we're going to cut our dumplings out. And a lot of people use, um, they use a um, pizza cutter. But Mama always used a fork. And I really like using the side of a fork. I don't want to use a pizza cutter because a pizza cutter is sharper and it will scratch the counter. So remember that. If you want to use a pizza cutter, you got to be careful and not ruin whatever the surface is you're working on. If you use the side of a fork, you ain't got to worry about it. We're going to get over here and drop these things. It just takes a minute to make dumplings. And I asked May, did she want me to make them some... Um, we call it uh, biscuits and she said no to go with them right here and we're going to put all of our dumplings down in here and if you buy frozen dumplings and you like them, you, you really should mix up some fresh dumplings. You'll be shocked at how good they are and how much you've forgotten how good they are. And it only takes a minute. I mean, look, I'm making this supper in a matter of minutes. I mean, you just got to simmer chicken during the day, so you got some good broth. Uh, take it off the bone. But that's not that hard either. I've been working out in the sunroom today. 
while I'm cooking my chicken. So it ain't like you gotta stand over the top of it or anything. Now here's all of our dumplings. We're gonna put them right here in this. And some people make dumplings out of their broth and some people make them with water. But now mama made them with sweet milk, which is just a regular milk, if you're wanting to know. And so that's what I'm doing. All right, these are cooking. Looking good. Take them about 10 minutes at the most. Now you want this boiling and you can see how yellow it looks because I did have the fat of the chicken in there and then I added that um, cream of chicken soup. When I boiled my chicken, I used an onion. I used a little bit of onion powder. I used a little bit of white pepper. Um, you can use black pepper, of course. Now we're gonna start dropping these. I used a little bit of um, ground sage in there when I boiled the chicken as well. So just throw stuff in there that you like. Now when I make chicken and dumplings, it's chicken and dumplings. It don't have um, veggies in it. So you're just going to drop your dumplings in while it's still at a high temperature. And then once I get them all dropped, I will turn it down a little bit because you don't want it to scorch on the bottom. All this flour going in is going to thicken the dumplings, which is, you know, what you want. So um, some people say their dumplings are not thick, as thick as mine, but you got to make sure that your dumplings have plenty of flour on them when you drop them. And I do kind of push mine down in there a little bit, scoot them around. Some people don't do that. It's not going to hurt it as long as you do it lightly and you don't force, you know, your spoon into there. But I kind of like to drop the dumplings into little holes, you know, so that they kind of go down inside there. going to push them down there just a little bit. Now at this point what you do is you put a lid on it and you turn it down. I'm actually taking the spoon and putting it underneath the dumplings and moving it back and forth to calm it down a little bit. Let's go ahead and put some pepper in it. Now chicken is so good with pepper. So we're going to pepper them. And I'll have to taste it as if it needs salt. Put a little bit more pepper. I like a lot of pepper in my chicken. Anything chicken, really. I do. Okay, we're going to put the lid on it and let it simmer for just about... 10 minutes and then we can eat them. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. You can tell they went from fluffy to a little bit flatter. And now we're going to add our chicken. That we took off of the bone. And I'm going to taste the broth and make sure it's salty enough. Right quick. Mm, it's so good. And it's just a little bit of pepper and just a tiny bit of salt, not much. Now these dumplings are really yellow, mostly because of my chicken. It was a very fatty chicken, so what you see on the top 
it's chicken fat. Um, that's what's yellow, if you're wondering. Some people used to put yellow food coloring in their dumplings, but I've never done that. Mama never did it, so I don't do it either. a plate. I'm going to use this to dip out my dumplings. Let me get some chicken in there. So you can see my chicken too. And then we're going to come over here and get some Brussels. Really good. Nice and soft. And now let's have a dumpling. Oh my god, goodness, they're so hot. Delicious home cooking with a glass to roll out my dumplings. So I've got my steam pot again and I'm going to put the sprouts in here. They've been washed in half. I'm going to put them in my steam pot. And then I'm just going to sprinkle these. I think I'm going to use my pasta herb blend and I'm going to crush it a little bit so that uh, the flavors will come out good. You can really smell them now. So um, we're just going to put this on our Brussels and I'm going to put a little salt on them and then we are going to get them over here to boil. I gotta put a little bit of water in the bottom of my pan. I haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna put this on the back eye and get it started. Go ahead and turn it on. I'm gonna pour these out onto this. They're really hot, so we're about to eat. That'll give that time to melt on there good. It'll be good. Might as well use it all. We're leaving tomorrow. I think I'll put my dumpling lid on top of it so it'll melt good. I hope you've enjoyed watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.